Schweinfutter was a very caring person. He cared for his family, he cared for his associates, he cared for his community. He was always trying to make the world a better place. I think art has served as an example for what many people would like to become. Art was a person that you knew his, his word was good. You knew the handshake was just as good as a contract. I can't remember anyone else I've ever met or done business with that had the qualities he did. Art Glaffelter was a man of great sincerity and honesty and ethics. Art's attitude toward life was uh, uh, work hard, be friendly, do what's right. Art uh, is what I would call a Renaissance man. Art was my mentor, and he was my friend. Art Gladfelter was a man of courage and a man of vision. Art is uh, one of the most genuine, passionate people that I know. You knew that uh, if you were with Art Gladfelter, you were involved in something that was going to be successful. Some people that, that you never forget uh, as, as you go through life. And you know, Mark Glasfelder is clearly one of those people. How are we doing? Uh, we're on? Okay. Well, I think what we're supposed to be doing here is we're supposed to be talking about you. Where do we start? Well, I think, as they always say, we, let's start at, at the beginning. Art had two brothers and three sisters. They lived in a very small community in Loganville. His father had a garage, and Art would help in the garage uh, at a very young age. If I wasn't at school or in bed, I was in the garage. Art often talked about his father and the example that Mr. Gladfelter set for art. I was pretty close to my father. Uh, I followed him around you know, constantly. I probably spent more time with my father than most young people ever would. Unfortunately, he lost his father at a very young age in a boating accident. He and my 11-year-old brother drowned. It was, it was really pretty hard for me. I guess there's very few days go by that I don't, that I don't think about that man. <laughs> I guess say to myself, I guess he'd be proud of me. I went into the Marine Corps in July of 1942. <laughs> My mother signed, I had to sign the papers, and she signed the papers only because she was sure they'd never accept me. I went to Lancaster with seven people I didn't even know, and I was the only one that they accepted. You didn't have to know Art more than 10, maybe 15 minutes at the outside to know that he was a Marine. They made a man out of me in a hurry. And he had this little saying, it said, lead, follow, or get the hell out of the way. went into the service, and then what were your first thoughts as you came out? About what I was going to do? I had the slightest idea. <laughs> Milton Baker, that had an agency out in Dallas town, called me and asked if I would like to go into the insurance business. Clearly, Art was a person that enjoyed blazing his own, his own trail. I'm sure that doesn't come as a shock to too many people. And in 1951, I opened my own agency. I moved the dining room table out of the dining room and put a desk in it. That's how I started. So in 1951, 
you step out on your own. That must have been a bit of a frightening experience. The only simple truth is I never thought about failing. I really never did. He never wondered if anything could be done. It was simply a matter of it had to be done and when it would be done. In our business, we often find that uh, the way you're growing is you're taking business from somebody else. And he said, there has to be a better way. As he would say, I just plain was getting tired of taking business from my friends. And that is so Art Gladfelter. It motivated Art to try to find a way he could work with his friends, not have to take business from them. The way it really happened is that after 15 years, you know, I said, if there's any group of people or, or industry or anything that is underserved by the insurance industry today, it's got to be the fire department. I asked him one time, how'd you get involved with the fireman business? And he said, I was playing cards in the, the Jacobus Fire Hall, and a fire alarm rang. And all those guys jumped up, and he said, and ran out and got on the truck and went to the fire. And he said, I thought, suppose one of those guys gets hurt. I wonder what, what kind of support he has. So he said, that's when I got involved with the fireman business. He pretty quickly came to the realization that uh, there were no coverages out there that truly addressed the significant exposures that these volunteers faced. And that's how the, the whole program began. In the first three years that I was in his fires program, every time I went out on the road, I lost money. He traveled to all 67 counties in Pennsylvania. I would drive sometimes two or three hours out, two or three hours back. I rarely stayed overnight because I couldn't afford to do it. And what he was building was he was building a distribution system. And his reputation for working with local agents just grew. Art was able to motivate people, ordinary people, to do extraordinary things. You lead by getting people to follow you, not by booting them in the butt. Art always believed in, in uh, putting his money where his mouth was, and uh, he was instrumental in starting many initiatives uh, from the Fallen Firefighters Foundation to the Congressional Fire Services Institute, and it was his initiatives that got some of them off the ground. Art was the guy that made things happen, the facilitator. Art's biggest contribution is his support uh, of the earliest formation of the Congressional Fire Services Caucus. The Congressional Fire Services Institute would not be here today were it not for our, our Gladfelter support. That was what was so special about Art. No matter what was going on, his passion and commitment for the foundation, he made the time to help us make it what it is today. But Art saw the sacrifices that, that the people in the volunteer fire service, uh, the sacrifices they were making on behalf of the rest of us, and supported uh, charitable organizations, community organizations that, that celebrated the, 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 the volunteer fire uh, service. No businessman, no businessman, did more for the first responders of America than Art Gladfell. He'll be missed. He will truly be missed. Art felt it was very important to give back to the community. The York community has been uh, an enormous beneficiary of uh, of our Gladfield. When I first met him, uh, he's devoted and passionate about uh, the youth of our community and making the community a better place uh, for our youth. He had a soft spot in his heart for kids that were, I don't like to use the word underprivileged, but I'd say underserved. And I think he understood the value of getting an education. And I think that's why he was so intent on young kids getting a, a head start, a good, solid education at a very, very young age. 
anything that would improve or help the community, he would be right there for. Art saw the United Way as a way to, through one organization, to have a major impact on the community as a whole. And he always had a, a saying that if we didn't have a United Way, we'd have to invent a United Way. The Cultural Alliance, it's like a United Way for the Arts that uh, funds operating supports of eight agencies throughout the county. It has a very fine national reputation, obviously, all because of Art Gladfelter. He's looking down here saying, why all the fuss, Mrs. Clark? I told you not to do that. <laughs> but he's up there looking down, and I'm sure he's very, very proud, and he should be. And I just hope and pray that we can carry the legacy through that he started. I just think that Lord Gladfelder was one of the finest friends I ever had. Let's put it that way. We understand what it took to get us to where we are, and uh, he will be sorely missed. Influenced all of us in, in many ways. Art taught me a tremendous amount about how to be a leader, and for that, I'll be eternally grateful. All I can say is, God bless you all. Art will be missed personally, but art will never be forgotten. I mean, art's a part of all of us who met him. I regarded Art Gladfelter as uh, most importantly a friend. He's just a good, good person. Someone who truly, truly cared about his community. You know, I just look at his generosity, his character, his integrity. You know, when you lose art, you really lose a great American. someone that successful cared so deeply about the York community. And I hope everyone takes that inspiration from art. I really do. I miss him. He's a good guy. I'd like to be like him. <laughs> what I would hope we would all do when we leave here today, and each day thereafter, is to celebrate Art's legacy by continuing to do all we can, individually and collectively, to make our world a better place. Well, I think we've hopefully accomplished what these gentlemen want us to do here today, which is to give them some material. <laughs> Uh, have we done that, gentlemen? That's it. I want to record now? 60 years. <laughs> what, what, what did he say? <laughs> he said, you want to run he said now they can start recording. Are we ready? <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't could do, do it again. again. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Great well, job. Thank you.